There comes this time when you're going to play against this other team that has a trans player. What was the name of that school? Um, Highlands High School. And did you know that there was a trans player at Highland High School? We were aware. Um, we've known since we're the same age, so we've known since their freshman year. Um, but we it's a conference team, so we had to play them. We couldn't just refuse the game. So we went into the game knowing that it was a transgender athlete. And was there any concern at that point? Yeah, there was. We knew that we couldn't really play back. Um, they hit it so hard that we didn't really know. We weren't used to taking hits that hard, so it was difficult for us from the beginning. So you knew that this person was going to have extra firepower because it's, it's obviously, it's a biological boy. This is not a, a biological girl he's going to have, who went through male puberty, as I understand it, with, you know, longer limbs and, and stronger muscles. Yes. Do you know any background on the trans player, like when they transitioned, et cetera? Um, I don't, I don't know any of their, like, you know, life or anything, but I just know, uh, cause they had to tell all the schools when they started playing. So our school knew. And is this person, it described this person's physical appearance. They're a lot taller. Um, they're a lot, I mean, obviously stronger. So <laughs> looks, looks just like a, it doesn't look, it's not like Leah Thomas. They do look more like a girl. Mm -hmm. So more like a girl, but identifiable <laughs> as a biological male. Yes. Okay. So did you, were you at all afraid going into this match or did you feel like I'm, I'll, it'll be fine? I was afraid. I was, um, I know a lot of the girls were, I was just kind of used to it because it was my fourth year, but I knew all the younger players, they were really scared, but they just knew that they had to play. So. So you've played against this team and this particular player in the past? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, no, and nobody got hurt? No. But of course, this person like you is aging, is getting older and stronger and growing into what is a biologically male body um, mm -hmm. as you go into your biologically female adult body uh, as you get older. So what happened in the game when you got hurt? Walk us through the moment. So um, I was hit and everything went black. Um, my teammates and coaches said I was unconscious for about 30 seconds. While my team was huddling around me, the opposing team was laughing. Um, but when I came back to consciousness, a trainer took me to the sidelines and checked me for a concussion and told me I was fine and could go back in. But luckily, my coach didn't let me go back in. Mm. Well, how are you? Do you remember how you were feeling? I was really, um, my adrenaline was really high and I was really, I don't know. I just didn't know what to think. I was really angry, but I was just hoping that it wouldn't happen to anyone else after I was out. Did they pull the trans athlete, the other school, no. the other team? No, they didn't. So this person continued playing against your teammates even after you were hurt? Yes. What was the reaction in the stands with the parents? You know, I go to these games all the time with my kids. I feel like there would have been a revolt by the parents. Everyone went silent and no one really knew what to do. There is a scream in the video. Um, my parents weren't there, actually. That was the only game they didn't go to. But my grandma was there and she, um, she was just so upset. She came down to the court and made sure I was okay. Everyone just kind of didn't know what to say. It was really awkward. We do have video of the moment, which I'll play for the watching audience. Forgive me. You don't need to look at it if it's upsetting to you, but I just want to show them what happened. You're on the, that's the trans player that we have the green circle around, spiking the ball right into your face and down mm -hmm. you go. The trans player is obviously larger, very power, powerful spike. And I mean, it doesn't look like you even had a chance to, to respond to that. I mean, looking back, do you feel like you did? did? Was there any chance of you to defend that ball? No. Um, 
lot of people say that there was, and I should have protected myself better, but I had, I seriously had no time to even think of that. Do you, when you watch that back now, is it upsetting to you? How does it make you feel? Um, yeah, it's upsetting, but I think I've seen it so much. I've kind of just got used to it. Mm -hmm. Right. I think our society's kind of gotten used to it, which we, we cannot. And that's one mm -hmm. of the reasons it's so important you're speaking out. So I'm going to get to your testimony this week and what you're doing to make some good, some positive impact from all this. But talk about your recovery because, you know, you get hurt in sport. You think, okay, that was unfortunate. And then you kind of move on. You, you were not able to really just move on. No, I, I was out for the rest of my volleyball season. Um, I came back like halfway through my basketball or a little bit in my basketball, but it wasn't the same as it has been the last three years. And I was really, I just wasn't playing like I used to. Um, but healing has been really slow. I've been trying to heal and take my time with it so I can get 100% back. But it's hard because, you know, I want to still do things and um, have fun and stuff, so... What are the lingering effects? This happened in September, this past September. Now here we are chatting at the end of April. What are the lasting effects from what happened to you? I have impaired vision, so I have to, I had to get my glasses uh, redone. I have partial paralysis on my right side, so my right side lags slightly. Um I I have really bad headaches and but not as bad but they just they've getting they're getting better but uh, I do have bad headaches. I have to have accommodations at school and test in separate rooms and get extra help when that's never been a problem before and just different things like that. So how has this affected you emotionally? It has given me. Um, I was really depressed. I had a really long depressive episode and I have anxiety now um but you know I'm I'm trying to get better from it but it has affected me you know mentally and emotionally what were you feeling depressed about it was it was just really sad because this is my last year and it was nothing like I imagined it was going to be everything changed I can't do things that you know, I've had no problem doing in the past. And it just was really hard for me to accept. This became a national news story pretty soon after it happened. Did the person who hurt you ever reach out to you and say, my God, I'm so sorry? They did reach out about a week ago um, for the first time ever. And there was no remorse. It wasn't an apology or anything. It was kind of just a little hateful comment, but that's that's the only time they've directly reached out to me. Let's talk about anxiety. Chances are you, like most of us, have experienced anxiety at one point in your life. If you have, you know it's no fun. Well, did you know that our dogs can experience anxiety too? That's right. Anxiety in dogs is actually much more common than you may think. Luckily, though, there is help. The Escape Proof High Anxiety Dog Crate by Impact Dog Crate is the first-of-a-kind dog crate designed specifically for dogs suffering from anxiety. Constructed from heavy-duty aluminum, this crate is built to provide the maximum amount of protection for your anxious pup. I know what you may be thinking. Wouldn't a crate make my dog's anxiety worse? The answer is no. Dogs enjoy having a safe and secure space like a den where they can go and relax and de-stress and not be bothered by anybody, whether it's a kid or you or another dog. I can speak to this personally. I see my dogs go in their crates all the time. We leave the doors open. They're like, where's Thunder? Where's Strud? They're asleep in their crate with the door open. They could be anywhere, but they choose to go in there. The High Anxiety Dog Crate provides just that, and it's even backed up with a 10-year dog damage warranty. Thanks to Impact Dog Crates, dog owners have peace of mind knowing their beloved pups and home are safe. It's a win-win. Go to impactdogcrates.com and enter the code MK to get 15% off your crate. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.